Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where people tend to get exactly what they ask for. I'm Uncle Reddit, and if I got a story for you. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we got some live cats today. <laughs> All three of them are here today. Sorry about the, uh, the lighting and everything else. It's horrible. I got bright light, daylight coming through the window. There's only so much I could do about it, but yep, figured I'd get them while they were here. They piled right up as soon as I got up this morning, wouldn't let me make the bed, so there you go. Cats rule the world. Blowing a major aerospace company's mind with a foreign graduate degree. I worked for a big American technology and defense firm with tens of thousands of employees. A senior executive who had worked there successfully for years was caught with a falsification on his resume. He was fired immediately and a new policy was instituted requiring all employees to sign a form giving the company permission to query the college or university with their highest claim degree for verification. I have a doctorate from an old prestigious European university, an institution that I was quite sure would have no interest in such a query, but whatever. I signed the permission form and attached a note warning the company that the university would probably ignore the request, which it did. After a month or two with no response, HR called me in and said that the university had not responded, as I had warned, but that corporate would accept a photocopy of my degree. Fine, I'm good with that. Remember the old prestigious European university part? My degree is a piece of actual parchment, about the size of a throw rug, with a wax seal about a centimeter thick and written entirely in Latin. So I bring it to the office and photocopy it a bit at a time by sliding it around on the photocopier window. It takes like 12 pages to get it all. I staple them into a pile and give it to HR who reluctantly pass it on to corporate. Another month passes. HR calls me in again. Corporate is complaining that your degree is written in a foreign language. Yup, I say, it's Latin. Tell them to find a priest to translate it and walked out. Never heard from them about it again. That's too funny. I can't believe you photocopied something the size of a throw rug and stapled it into a pile for HR. On a side note, there's a lot of priests these days that probably still wouldn't be able to interpret that for them. But they did say a photocopy would suffice. How GameStop tricked me twice. It was a few years back. My friends got me Watch Dogs, a video game for my 20th birthday. The game was not out yet, so they pre-ordered it in GameStop and they got a quite expensive edition, about 70 euros. As the game was not out yet, I got some papers to retrieve it when it was released. It was actually Micromania, the French GameStop owned by GameStop. I'll refer to GameStop to make it easier. The game had some delays and was released a year later, so I instantly went to GameStop to get my game the week it was officially released. I showed the papers to the cashier slash owner and he told me, sorry, but your gift card has expired. And I was like, what the F are you talking about? The game just got released like two days ago. Seems like when you pre-order a game at GameStop, they give you a document that says you pre-order the game so that they keep it in stock and a gift card of the amount of the game. And this one expired after a year, so a few weeks back. I tried to explain my situation to the owner. My friend pre-ordered the game and I just came to get it when the game was out. Nothing unusual. The guy was visibly upset as I didn't want to pay the 70 euros for my birthday gift already paid for by my friends. He told me that he'll have to call some guys to see what he can do. I heard him have a couple of laughs on the phone with the guys, so I thought it was going to be okay since the owner seems to know the gift card guy. Big mistake. Never assume someone actually cares about your situation. The owner told me that after speaking with the gift card guy, he can only get me 40 euros of the 70 and that I'll have to pay the remaining 30 euros. I was furious, but I was also pretty shy and didn't want to make a scene. He told me I could file a complaint later to GameStop and get my money back, but seriously, that was just an excuse to get me out quickly. I finally agreed to pay the remaining 30 euros and file a complaint when I get back home. I got redirected a couple of times and I was getting furious at the situation. They didn't want to hear anything and often just didn't respond at all. So after a week of me sending mails, I said something along these lines. If I do not get a response back before tomorrow night, I'll start by spreading my story to social networks and notation services. I'll explain how I ended up paying 100 euros instead of 70 for a game before taking it to court. Kind regards. I did get a response after this mail, stating that gift cards were only available for one year. They didn't want to admit their mistake, but they were offering me six vouchers for 10 euros for my loyalty. 
I asked for 30 cash, but since I got 60 to spend on games, I took this as a win and accepted. They mailed me the six codes and I happily went back to GameStop to buy some games. I didn't remember what I chose, but when I went to pay, the cashier, who was the same guy as last time, told me that he can only apply one voucher per buy. So since I got a 60 euro game, I'll have to pay the remaining 50 euros since he can apply only one 10 euro voucher. I literally froze like, what the F, is there some kind of hidden camera? Is this some kind of joke? I told him I won't pay for this game and take a look around in the store. That's when I saw them, a big pile of 10 euro Steam gift cards. So I put on a big smile and told him I'll get this $10 Steam gift card. The guy was visibly confused but accepted and applied my voucher. So I got it for free. Once he handed me the bill, I said thank you and told him I'll also take this $10 Steam card. And also that one. And that one. Steam is an online platform to buy games, way easier and cheaper than GameStop. The guy was visibly kind of angry and told me something like, wasn't it like 30 euros missing, not 60? While scanning my codes and giving me my Steam gift cards. I said, yeah, yeah, but I got angry, which must have sounded a little fun since I was really a shy guy and looking so. In the end, I followed exactly what they said and ended up with 60 euro free Steam gift cards when they wanted to trick me with their vouchers. I like to think that they didn't make a dime of profit with this since they bought Steam gift cards for their real price from Steam. Needless to say, I never went back to another GameStop slash Micromania ever in my life. Edit. To be precise, I actually only got 30 euros of free Steam cards. The other 30 was the reimbursement of me having to pay 30 euros for my game in the first place. Yeah, I don't understand why companies play games, especially game companies. It just makes no sense that, you know, you pre-order something, it's paid for. So that gift card was basically a placeholder, I thought, but I don't know. It just makes no sense. There's always an angle to screw somebody. You need a note from a doctor. This happened to a friend many years ago. I may have posted this, but for those that didn't see it, here it is again. Rather short, the conversation and actions obviously abbreviated to what happened. My friend had an extended absence due to some medical issue, which isn't important for this post. What is important is that on his return, HR had contacted him with the specific pages from the employee handbook which stated that an absence of more than X days requires a note from a doctor. MC on Q, my friend who has a PhD, but is not a medical doctor, wrote himself a note and submitted it to the HR department. <laughs> the following hilarity ensued. HR, the note must be from a medical doctor. Friend, the manual states from a doctor. HR, you can't write yourself a note, you're not a doctor. Friend, according to my degrees and my legal title, I beg to differ. HR has legal review the manual. Attorneys, based on the section in the employee manual as written, you must accept the note because he is a doctor. HR accepts the note from my friend for his own absence. HR and attorney, they revamped the whole section of text to specifically state that the note must come from a medical doctor that is not yourself as well as any other gray area in the manual. Friend. Well, I thought they were going to argue a little more. That was fun. Yep. If you're going to say just doctor and he's got a doctorate, yeah, he fulfilled the requirement. And this, boys and girls, is why legal documents have so many words in them and seemingly go in endless circles. Because if you don't state very precisely what you're asking for or demanding in that document, there's always going to be a workaround. Don't leave my work area even if there's no work to do? No problem, oh boss. I, 28 male, work for a major shipping company. At the time, my job was to use a towing tractor to find ULDs, big metal shipping containers that go on planes, for our work group to load up with freight. The big problem, however, was that our company simply did not have enough ULDs to go around, and it was a constant battle against other work groups to get them first. When we finally did get some ULDs, We'd have to stage them in a parking lot until they were needed. One particularly bad Monday, there were absolutely zero ULDs to be had and a huge line of other workers waiting for empties to show up. I decided that I'd take 30 minutes to organize and clean up our staging area while my coworker was in line waiting. It's important to note that normally another worker would do this, but he was out sick. And if you don't clean up the staging area, you won't have any room to park the ULDs. Well, my assistant manager saw this and wasn't happy about it. In his typical passive-aggressive self, he asked, What are you doing and why is it not getting cans? I tried to explain the situation, but he wasn't having it. Normally, when he starts to act like a pee, I'd get my manager involved. But he was also out sick. 
After talking to what might as well have been a brick wall, he stops me mid-sentence and slowly and loudly says, Do not leave the ULD lot until you have ULDs. You got it, boss. I drove my tractor to the ULD lot, parked in line, and sat there for three hours until it was break time. On break, I asked my buddy to borrow a book, and I continued to sit out in a huge, not moving line for six more hours until it was time to leave. During that 10 hour shift, I maybe did 30 minutes of work. Tuesday comes around and you bet your butt I'm ready for another hard day's work. <laughs> I decided this week would be a great time to read Harry Potter. For the next month of work, I literally just sat in a heated tractor reading, snacking, and kicked back maybe doing 15 minutes of work every two hours. I kept this up until I took another position with the company. Sometimes middle management is just totally useless. It just seems like there's no forethought. There's no... <laughs> You, you got to listen to your people, man. They know the deal. Okay, somebody's waiting. While we're waiting, we're making good use of our time and cleaning things up. Nope, that's not good enough. Got to do it exactly this way. Even if it means you sitting on your butt in a tractor for eight hours of a 10-hour day. Brilliant. Judge sues City over bike road. Asks for it to be removed. City partially agrees with the plaintiff. The Green Party government of Hanover, Germany, declared a couple of roads in the city as bicycle roads, meaning bikes can ride next to each other. Cars have to respect bikes and can't overtake. Long-term target is reducing car traffic in the city and prioritizing bikes, buses, etc. A judge didn't agree that a residential area road was made into such a bicycle road and sued the city on the grounds that this particular street doesn't give any advantage to the bikes compared to a normal road since in many cases it's not large enough for two bikes next to each other when a car is coming down the other way. The intention was to close the bicycle road, because he states that bikes are higher up in the hierarchy than cars. The court sided with the plaintiff's arguments, who now hope that the bicycle road became a normal, car-prioritizing street again. The city also agreed with the plaintiff, but instead of closing the bike road, they're removing the parking spaces on the side of the road to make enough space for the bikes. Green Party is very happy. Liberal Party said if you vote green, you have to accept to live in a green dictatorship. Don't even get me started on bike lanes, man. That is such a contested topic in this area where I live. The small cities and towns around here want to add more bike-friendly areas, more bike lanes, bike paths. I get it. I like biking. I think it should be up to the individual person whether they want to use a bicycle or a car or public transportation if it's available whatever but some of the designs of the bike lanes that they come up with are just horrendous part of it's because they have this pie in the sky image of what a bike lane should be or a bike friendly town and what they end up doing is making it bad for cars and bikes and pedestrians in the process there are already state and local laws that govern how bikes should act on the road, how cars should act on the road, where bikes can take the whole lane, where they can't. Let's face it, whether you're a biker or a driver, most people have no idea what those rules and regulations are and they don't even care to learn because they're more important, no matter which side they're on. Okay, I'll stop buying plastic bags. I used to work for a small company and due to the bus times, I'd arrive at work 45 minutes early every day. I was nearly always first in, so would be the one opening up the office and getting things set up. For context, my boss was pretty tight, so this would even include switching on the fridge after a weekend. One of the tasks I took it upon myself to do was to buy the milk for the office, in my 45 minutes unpaid time. The shop was about a 20 minute round trip, and I always got enough to last a week. In the UK, we pay for plastic bags, so I always tried to have a couple spare in my work bag. However, sometimes I just forgot, so would buy one from the shop. While I was allowed to expense the milk, sometimes I would forget or lose the receipt, etc. So then the company would be getting free milk. One day I submitted my expense claim and left the receipt on the finance manager's, i.e. boss's wife's desk, and went for a meeting. Usually when this happened I would come back to a couple of quid to cover the milk. This time, however, I came back to the money in a note asking me could I stop expensing the company for 5p plastic bags as it's inefficient and a waste of company resources. So I did. In the 12 months I continued to work for them, I never bought milk again for the office and stopped doing any chores in the opening up of the office, other than switch off the security alarms. I'd instead use that 45 minutes to eat breakfast or even just sleep. For the sake of 5p every couple weeks, the company lost someone doing office chores for free, started paying for all their milk, plus had the inconvenience of running out of milk during the day, with someone having to use work, i.e. paid time, to buy more, which was even more awkward when we had clients in. We call that nickel holding up a dollar. 
people make the dumbest decisions thinking they're saving all kinds of money when in reality they're wasting more time and more money and looking stupid in the process. Well, hey, if you enjoyed this malicious compliance, do me a favor. Click this video here on the screen. I think you're going to like this one too. See ya.